Hello. A little while ago I picked up this DPS 5015 power supply module. This is a little bit more capable than the one I had last year which was 5005, so that's 50 volts 5 amps capable. This one is 50 volts 15 amps capable. And I had a few people asking me occasionally whether that other one that I had is still working, which I thought was a little bit of a cheeky question, but as it turns out, it is not. It, it just suddenly died on me one day. Um, to be fair, I was using it for powering a uh, hot wire foam cutting nichrome wire. So I had just a little piece of nichrome wire about maybe five centimeters long. And that was all there was in the circuit. So it was basically a short circuit. And even though I was only using about 1.8 volts and one amp, so it's like less than two watts of power output, I'm guessing maybe it didn't like that. Um, it managed to do it while I was doing the cutting, but then the next day it wasn't working. So I don't know. But I liked it so much that I had always been thinking about getting another one and a more high power one specifically to maybe not have that happen again. So when I saw this thing come up on Banggood, I began, began to get really interested in actually getting one because one of the slight drawbacks of these things is that unless you have something nice to mount them in, um, this one in particular is kind of a pain. You've got to sort of, you know, see it's just not very easy to use. And that's one thing that put me off. I was a little bit too lazy to make a case of my own. But when I saw this one, I thought, wow, that looks quite nice. And I got this here, which is um, goes with the case. Or there's a couple of options. You can get this one, which not sure exactly how they're different. They look exactly the same in the screenshots. But anyway, I thought I would make a video mainly about how the case um, works and whether it's well made or just some basic stuff like that. But there are also a couple of small changes that have been made to the user interface on this to make it a little bit easier to use. So I'll just go over the changes in the UI, I think. I don't really have have to go through all of the features again because I did that in my other video which I'll um, put a link to in the description if you want to see that. So the case kit consists of the case or the main part of the case itself. This is made of aluminium and then you get a bunch of screws and some banana plug pieces and a switch and fan and pieces of wire and then you get the front and back back plates for this which are also aluminium I think. Should be, yeah. Um, and the aluminium pieces seem to be very nicely made. There's no nasty sharp edges. Uh, it's all a sort of a nicely grey coloured finish on there. And it slots into front and the back slot together. And feels quite nice to slide on there. It's not, not, too, small, uh, not too loose or too tight or anything. Feels just about right. There's also this little circuit board piece which I wasn't quite sure what to do with but if you look at the product page there's a couple of photos which show you pretty much what you need to know and you're going to have to do a little bit of soldering to get this together but not, not too much. Uh, so the main power coming from the banana plugs goes on here. Probably don't need to solder that one actually. Key is where the switch goes and then the power going out to the actual main module is going to be on there and then there's another power trace going into this bit which looks like it's just a switching regulator to give 5 volts to the fan for the case and you can maybe use this over here it's, these are both 5 volts again by the looks of it they're all just joined together so if you wanted something else uh, that runs on 5 volts you could perhaps put it on there all these pieces seem to fit in here quite well there's sort of these post bits are keyed like that so they're not just a round circle and that stops you from stops you from being able to turn them which lets you unthread this bit um, yeah it all fits fits nicely so yeah this this piece is just a 5 volt back so I just switches the fan on that's all okay I'm just about finished now I'm at the final step where I'm just going to close it all up but I made a bit of a silly mistake, so let me just offer a tip for anybody else out there who might be constructing this, and hopefully you won't do the same thing that I did. So the problem is you've got to put this on like that, and it will slide on, and then the back will go on, but then I, I can't access the uh, points where I need to screw that down. <laughs> so what I think what you're supposed to do is 
screw it on first and then tilt that back a little bit so that it's down there and then you'll be able to slide that on and get it through but I can't do that because I've cut these wires too short they're only just long enough to get to get over there <laughs> so um, yeah that was a bit silly fortunately I have plenty of other pieces of wire that I can use to do this but if you don't have other wire sitting around you might want to just be careful about not cutting these too short by the way have you ever noticed that when you're soldering things up sometimes you make a good solder joint and sometimes you make a bad solder joint and sometimes you make a really really nice looking solder joint but it's kind of like Murphy's Law at least in my experience that when you make a perfect solder joint it turns out later on that you've done something wrong and you're gonna to have to come back and undo it which is the case with these solder joints here they were really really nice and they're the ones that I'm gonna to have to redo funny how that seems to always work like that okay all done now and it finishes up a pretty slick looking unit in my opinion at least um, looks quite professionally done you've got these little rubber feet and um, yeah, it all fits together well this gray color is not actually the one that was shown on the Banggood listing but I'm kinda glad that it's not because it matches this darker gray matches with the front panel so it uh, looks like it all belongs together now um, it's got to be said that it is quite noisy um, so let me just turn it on and see if you can hear that now that's just the back fan and it gets about that loud again when the fan inside starts going um, on the other hand it is pushing quite a lot of air out in fact it's pushing so much air out that I can actually feel it being sucked in from the front so that is a good sign that it's going to be keeping itself cool at least so I personally don't mind this kind of a constant droning noise as long as it's not too loud I can sort of filter it out and it doesn't bother me after a while but I know that some people I've heard people complain that they don't like this kind of noise so maybe just something to consider if you're going to have it running for a long time next to you while you're trying to work so I have on here just an LED um, this is a 3 watt I think LED and it's limited it has a driver current limiting driver to limit it to a safe current for it to run so it looks like it's 250 milliamps so I'm just gonna have this attached while I look at the stuff in the menus so that we can have something to power that's not I can play around with the current settings a bit without damaging this okay so let's have a look at what's changed in the user interface from the previous version and I think probably the most salient of the changes is going to be that these upper and lower two buttons on the left are now volts and amps so previously you used to have to hit the set button to go into the top row and then you'd hit the button in the dial to move along so to change amps you'd have to go all the way along with this button going tap 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 but now you can just jump straight into volts and then out again and amps like that so once you're inside one of those you still need to use this button to um, go to different digits but at least now you can get into the current or the voltage a lot quicker another nice change is that now you can switch between two presets with just one press of a button so these volts and amps buttons here you can see they're also labeled M1 and M2 so by holding this down I can change to preset number one or preset number two so you just switch between them um, and I've set these up so that they're all 10 volts but each preset will be the current will be whatever the preset is so for preset number two we'll have two amps preset number one will have one amp so let me change to preset number two by holding this down for two seconds or something so it'll switch to two amps and it just pops up here as well M2 to show us that we just successfully changed into preset number two and to change into preset number one I can hold this down so I guess they they decided or it was pretty obvious really that even though you can use I think 10 presets a lot of people mostly will just be switching between two or three presets at the most so if they could bring these two out onto the commonly used buttons then that would be a nice change so um, I'm quite happy to see that not that I actually do switching between um, voltages and current presets that much but still for the people that do that will be a welcome change I'm sure and as far as setting up the presets goes 
I'm not sure if they've made this easier or not, but I I didn't really spend too much tr time trying to learn how to do it with the last version. So perhaps this is exactly the same as it was before, but I've, I've actually figured out how to do it. It was a pretty convoluted way of doing it. That's why I didn't really look into it too much. But to set up the presets, you hit set once, and then you use these buttons to go down to right at the bottom it says M pre so that's memory preset and then use this button to go in there and then dial to whichever one you want to change and you can see as I go to man it's a pity we can't see that there but I'm on M1 at the moment and you can see that's 10 volts 1 amp M2 will be 10 volts 2 amps M3 will be 10 volts 3 amps so I've set up these three just to use as examples so they're all 10 volts, but the current will be whatever the memory preset number is. Uh, so once you've selected which one you want to change, you hit set again, and then go up to here. And then it's still a little bit awkward because if you accidentally hit the wrong button, all your settings will be wiped. Um, I mean, they won't be saved. So you've got to be careful to hit the dial button to go in here. So if I wanted to make this one say 4 amps, I'd go like that. I'll just put it back to 3. And then to save it, you have to long press the set button. And you'll see it pops up there M3. So that's letting you know that it successfully saved that to preset number 3. Um, so to get those back, so that's preset number 1 and 2 were quite easy to get. But if we want to get the other presets from 3 onwards, we can do it by holding down the set button. And then notice this little display showed up there. And then we can use the dial to select which preset we want. So we'll go to preset 3 that we were just doing. And then short press of the set button. So this should change it to 10 volts, 3 amps. Like that. So it's not too bad. It's... um. I wouldn't call it very intuitive, but I'm not sure how they could improve it a whole lot um, with just these buttons, you know. Uh, so there's just one more thing that I wanted to look at, and that is... See how it says off there? Um, so let's just see what we've got. So <clears throat> preset number one is on. Preset number two is off. And what this means is that if I change to preset number one and the power was already on, it will keep it on. But if it was not on, it won't switch it on. Uh, so basically it's a, it's a binary and. <laughs> so if it's already on and the preset setting was on it will keep it on but if it was basically the preset and the current state of the on switch have to be the same for it to keep it on so if I switch to preset number two now by just holding down this button it will switch to my preset number two which was 10 volts 2 amps but it will also switch off the power at the same time now if I switch back to preset number one it will switch back to 10 volts 1 amp but it's not going to turn it on because it wasn't already on so only if it was already on it would stay on so if I go to preset 2 and then turn it on and then go to preset number 1 because my preset number 1 is okay to leave it on it will just stay on I hope that made sense it's a little bit of a strange thing but that's what that on and off means. Uh, anyway, so that's all I wanted to look at for this video, and I'm looking forward to using this a lot in the future. Maybe not with my hot wire cutting, foam cutting anymore. Um, got to admit, this noise is actually starting to get on my nerves a little bit, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes in the future. But anyway, I hope that was informative. Thanks for watching. See you later. Oops, hold on. Looks like I made a couple of mistakes there. Uh, my first mistake was thinking that this M1 and M2 selection where you hold this down to select between those two presets 
that was not actually new. Uh, I've just been looking at my other video from last year. That was already there, I think. Um, and the other thing that I got wrong was that I thought that this setting here for each preset where we have on and off, where we could say that when we switch to that preset, we also want to make it switch the, the main power off. Uh, that was not actually new, but I saw something in the documentation stating that a feature like that had been added. So I thought that was it because I hadn't actually used that too much with the last one. But the thing that has been added was not that one. It was if we go right the way down and we keep going, there's actually another row to this table. And this one is called S in E. I think this is like switch initialization or something. And by default, this is off. But we can use that if I go in here and change that, turn that to on. Um, what this does is it will determine the status of the main power switch at boot time of the whole device. So I just switch the whole thing right off. And when I switch it on now without doing anything else, after it's booted up, it will turn the power on. It didn't do it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I set that right? Oh, do I need to... Um, hold on. Maybe I need to hold down set like this. No? Let me try that again. It worked before I started recording. Isn't that always the way? As soon as you start to record something, it's, it doesn't work. Well, there we go. You saw that I did that exactly the same both times, didn't you? Maybe I did something different, but... Now... It looks like that is on. Let me just try that again. Okay, well anyway, it's working now. I'm not sure what I did wrong the first time, but... The point is that uh, you can set it to turn this switch on when the machine boots. Um, I don't see that as a huge advantage. All it does is it saves you from pushing that button once. <laughs> but anyway, that's the uh, correct features that have been added. So now I think I'm finished. See you later.